Why are local nightclubs dying? Why are attendances down? And why are the number of venues in your neighborhood getting fewer and fewer every year? That's what we're talking about today on this live lesson from the Digital DJ Tips DJ School. See you in 30 seconds. So it's not just me or us saying this. I mean, what would I know as a 50 year old bloke sat on a little rock called Gibraltar where Digital DJ Tips is based? No, it's not just us. It's our students are telling us that they're finding it harder and harder to find the gigs that they need to get that rite of passage, to get to the point where they've earned their stripes as a DJ. You know, it was a completely almost fail-safe way of becoming a great DJ. And you ask any great DJ nowadays who's spent a couple of decades in the game, they will tell you about with, with fondness about the residency that they had or the residencies they had back in the day. It's an important thing for DJs to be able to play in clubs locally, to learn how to break records, to learn how to nurture a crowd, to get that community feeling that only a no local neighborhood club can bring but it seems to be something that's dying. And that's a problem. So today we're gonna to be talking about why, and we're gonna to talk to you about why. We want your experiences where you are, because as I say, I'm sat here isolated in a little studio and I want your input. That's what's gonna make this useful. If you've just joined us and you're not used to what goes on here, this is a live show. You're probably watching the recording of this show from Digital DJ Tips, the world's largest online DJ school. We do this every week on a Tuesday, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern, but you can also watch the replay. You can also ask questions underneath wherever you're watching this. Me and my team will get back to you. We do it as a free extra on top of the DJ courses that we make and sell. We are the biggest DJ school with 37,000 students worldwide. Wide. And we love doing this stuff. So what was the picture that I had on the screen at the opening sequence there? This is a very famous picture. So famous that I went and found a copy and bought it from the photographer myself and I wanted a copy to hang on the wall here at Digital DJ Tips. In a way it embodies all that I love about clubbing. What we have here is Sasha DJing to a crowd. I think this is in LA um, back in about 1999. Uh, and look, this to me is is, is clubbing. This is what clubbing is all about. I just love this photo. It's from a global underground compilation CD. But I, uh, as I say, I contacted the photographer, bought the picture, and uh, I keep it now here in the studio to remind me why I do this. Uh, so I'll put that safely to one side, hang it back, back on the wall later on. Uh, so you might say, well, it's obvious what's killed the local nightclub. It was COVID. Well, you know what? It wasn't COVID. Uh, we were talking about this before COVID appeared. And here's the proof. This is an article that kind of got us talking about this years ago. And I remember when we were talking about it here in the, here in the Digital DJ Tips studio. This is why are all the nightclubs shutting down? And this is from September the 5th, 2019. This is an article that predates COVID. There we go. Predates COVID. Uh, by merely weeks, but nonetheless, it predates COVID and, COVID and it was a thing that was being talked about even back then. So we can't blame COVID, but it's still going on for sure. Here's an article from just, uh, just this week or this, yeah, a month ago. Uh, over 100 independent UK nightclubs have closed in the last 12 months, study shows, and that was from June 2023. And we hear this is going on worldwide. So it really can't be blamed on COVID. Now, personally, I blame it on... What's going on there? They're lighting a cigarette for Sasha. I think it all started when smoking became banned. Banned indoors. Now, I think smoking uh, being banned full stop is a very, very good thing. Don't get me wrong. But there was something about getting 400 people in a sweaty room and keeping them there for four hours and taking them on a journey that just isn't there anymore because people are always leaving. Uh, all right, there's fewer and fewer people smoking, but people are vaping nowadays and that's often barred indoors as well. So people are nipping outside every 20 minutes or half hour. You just, I don't know, you just don't seem to get that 
togetherness thing going. I mean, maybe it's just an old man shouting at clouds, but I think I've always kind of like half tongue in cheek said that was kind of the beginning of the decline. Uh, but anyway, um, there's more pertinent reasons, I think. Uh, so we're going to talk about a few of them now. So the first one I want to talk about is uh, represented by this picture here. And it's something that James Hype, our tutor, has been talking about as well. And it's something that we well, certainly as an older generation that remembers when this thing wasn't the case, uh, talk about as well. What is it? Of course, it's phones in nightclubs. Because if a nightclub, if partying is all about being together, it's all about a shared experience in the here and now, then the phones bring the absolute opposite in. The Instagram reels and the TikTok filming and the sharing where you are and the shazamming and all the stuff that the phone brings, or just checking in on what's going on somewhere else, it's kind of the opposite of what it should be all about, possibly. And by the way, I'm not saying I believe or even I advocate everything I'm going to say here because I want your views on this. We're going to come to you at the end of this and talk about that. So do tell us your views. They all come through here to our live show uh, ticker in the studio. So I'll be getting to that. But look, these things here have brought an awful lot of good to the world, but they've also brought an awful lot of bad, I would say, you know, from Blackberry or Crackberry onwards. Uh, they just take people out of the here and now, don't they? So maybe phones have got something to do with it. There's a glimmer of hope there that the younger generation, so hats off to you, James Hype, and so on, are starting to see it. There's even venues where you leave your phone at the door. Uh, so yeah, phones. But the DJs are doing it as well. They're there, you know, someone tongue in cheek in the studio here today, here at the Digital DJ Tip School, someone tongue in cheek said, you know, in the old days, the DJs would be worried if the drug dealer didn't turn up, now they're worried that the videographer doesn't turn up. Now, obviously we are not advocating illegal behavior here, but you see what we're getting at, don't you? Times have changed, right? And these things are possibly right at the heart of it. All right, so phones might be part of the issue, what else? Well, the next thing is illustrated by this picture here. Quite a nice picture, I thought. Crate digging, looking for rare vinyl, looking for that perfect track that you just know is going to be massive in your club, in your DJ sets for the next six weeks, six months, ever. We're talking about the value and scarcity of music itself. Because in the past, these things were a DJ's currency, right? I'm teaching a course on acapellas and stems at the moment, and I found an old record. Uh, in fact, I'll run over to the other side of the studio and get it so I can show you. I found an old record that I used to, I used to hammer back in the day. Uh, it's called Kicking in the Beat by Pamela Fernandez. Uh, but the reason we were talking about this is that our current course we're filming is an acapellas course, an acapellas DJing course. And this had an or Capella is on the Or record label, Or Capella, in other words, a cappella, mix there, there you go, um, version of this song. And DJs would look high and low to find that special a cappella, that special song. People would travel halfway across the country because they knew the DJ they were going to hear had 10 songs in his or her bag that no one else had. And that is not the case anymore. Everyone can get everything instantly. You can Shazam what the DJ is playing and listen to it in your headphones there and then if you want or the minute you get home. All DJs have got all music. And so are people actually paying an entry fee to go and hear DJs play the music they love anymore? I don't know, you tell me. But I think that might well be part of it. The value and scarcity of music has changed. Music is devalued nowadays. It's everywhere. It's become a bit of a commodity rather than something that was loved and collected. I don't know, again, you tell me. So the next one uh, I illustrate with this picture here. Looks like a great night, right? This is Pasha in Ibiza. And I'm going to illustrate this point then with this picture because this picture is one of the biggest clubs in the world. It's a destination club. It's a club that has a season. In other words, they have their 12 nights, they open and then they close at the end of the season. And then that's it for the rest of the year. This is the kind of thing that it appears is becoming bigger and bigger right now. What am I talking about? I'm talking about events taking over from small weekly local club nights. The kind of club nights in your neighborhood where you play as a resident DJ and people come every week and that is their release, that's where they go, that's where they meet their friends, that's where shit happens for them. Now, it's all about big events, arguably. So big festivals, the big scene in 
Vegas, the big scenes in Ibiza, even in big cities, the warehouse project, print works, things like that, where people go and the whole season, if you like, is planned and then it starts and it ends and that's it till next year. And of course, the big one-off festivals, people spending three, four hundred pounds dollars to go to a festival for one, two, three days and then that's it, they're done until next time, right? So is it that the big switch to events and so on is hitting immediately neighbourhood clubs? Possibly. Certainly it's something that didn't exist when I was a rookie DJ back in my 20s, back in the, in the early 90s. Uh, and certainly for the 10 years going up to that in the UK, super clubs appeared and events started to appear. But they weren't there at the beginning of that period when, when arguably this kind of neighbourhood local clubbing was in its heyday. So another really obvious one, of course, and uh, what picture did I pick to influence uh, to my thinking on this one? It was this picture here, the cost of living crisis. So there's always been recessions, right? There's always been times where we have less money. There's always been times that are hard. Arguably, we're in a longer, more sustained crisis right now, arguably. But I think there's something else going on here. I think it's the energy crisis. I think the cost of energy is going up. And that means the cost of opening and running a venue is going up. So not only are the people coming unable to afford it because of the scarcity of money in their lives, because in the past that wasn't always an issue. We're going to get onto that again at the end. But the venues themselves are struggling to stay open. Or if they put their prices up, it just exacerbates everything else because people really can't afford it. So whereas in the past, maybe the price didn't go up, but people just found it harder to pay that price. Now, prices are having to go up at the same time as people having less money to pay. The gap's getting too big. But the cost of living crisis possibly is a cause of neighbourhood clubs really having the hardest times they've ever had. But there's another reason venues are closing, and I've used this picture here to illustrate that one. But I would show you that picture there, but unfortunately it's gone. Oh, it's a shame that, because it was a really good picture. Anyway, never mind. It's gentrification of city centres. In other words, the places where nightclubs traditionally were are filling up with expensive apartments and places where people don't want noise anymore. And so the opportunity to have a nightclub in a city is now declining. And there's a lot of clubs that are battling with the councils and with the local administration, wherever they are, because they're causing issues for the newly arrived residents in those city centres. I can only give you an example from my own life, the city centre in Manchester in England, where I spent 20 years very, very happily as a younger person, DJing, partying, going to gigs and so on, has changed beyond recognition. No one used to live there. There was a, here's a story, there was a massive bomb, believe it or not, set off in the centre of my city uh, back in the days of the Irish Republican Army, the IRA and their conflict with the British. And this bomb devastated, absolutely devastated the centre of Manchester, wiped it out. It was like a 15 year rebuilding just to get it back to where it was. It was, it was horrible. No one died. <laughs> and there's only a couple of people living anywhere near to where it happened. And it happened after the shops had shut, so hey, awful. But if that happened now, I don't even want to say it. Because there's now tens of thousands of people living in the centre of the city which, who weren't there before. And so we end up with this situation where the clubs and the people living there are not compatible. So it could just be gentrification causing the venues to close. Uh, and my final image, uh, not as good as the, gent the gentrification one I had unfortunately, but it'll have to do, is this. Online dating. Is it just that Tinder and all the other online sites for meeting the opposite sex mean that fewer people are having to run the gauntlet of going to a dark sweaty nightclub to cop off? to meet someone from the opposite sex, to get married. I met my wife in a nightclub. She came up to me and said, your website's rubbish and I can help you with that. And I thought that is a unique approach because I'd heard them all. And we're now married, but we met in a nightclub. Is that the way it happens now? I don't know, you tell me, but it could just be that online dating is causing all of this stuff. What's the solution? How do we solve this? So I want, I want to end by talking about that now before we go over to talk to you about this stuff. 
Uh, look, I've always, here's what I've always truly believed, and you tell me whether this is realistic anymore. I've tr always truly believed that the way to get anywhere in life to do anything is to flip the coin, right? You can't get a job as a DJ, then become the person who employs DJs and employ yourself, right? Flip the coin. Uh, you can't get your blog articles accepted by any websites, you can't get your videos accepted by any streaming channels or whatever, then flip the coin and become the website. That's how I started Digital DJ Tips. You know, if you think that way, then you, you get an entrepreneurial mindset. You get a, D, a, 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 a DIY mindset. So look, I don't, I don't fully buy this idea that people don't go out when times are hard. I personally think when times are hard, people need to go out more. They will, they will prioritize their blowout on a Saturday night in order to put up with the, the shit they're going through in the rest of the week, excuse my language. So I don't, fully buy into that. The most successful club night I was ever involved in, a club very beloved to me called Tangled. I might even have the book here of Tangled that I can show you because we had a book. Here it is. We had a book. Look at this. Well done, Steve and Terry, my colleagues. This is the book of the nightclub that I used to DJ at and I helped form. Uh, absolutely fantastic times. Absolutely fantastic times. And this nightclub won awards. It got me DJing in Ibiza. Uh, this nightclub really was the making of me. And we launched this club in the middle of an awful recession in 92, 93, right? And so I'm not having it that you uh, can't do stuff in a recession because you can. People want to go out. So my view really is Find your crowd and do it yourself. Start your little club night. It might only be 20 people in a bar, but find 20 people of your age and of your crowd and of your crew who want to go out and do it yourself. Yes, you're going to adopt modern techniques. Yes, you're going to use online platforms to help. Yes, you're going to use live streaming and online networking and so on. But I still think it is possible and we still hear of people doing it, but it's certainly a lot harder than it used to be. And that's what we're going to talk about with you now for the next 10 or 15 minutes. Now, at the end of today's show, I'm going, and I should have really told you about this at the beginning, but uh, I'm going to announce the three winners of our competition to win the, uh, to win the um, Hercules controllers. Where's that Hercules controller? It's not here, but I'll find it on the website to show you. So we had a competition. This is a great competition. We love this one. Uh, to win this controller from Hercules, which is called the uh, T7. Here we go. So we had three of these. Thank you, Hercules, for donating these for the cause. Um, we had a free prize draw. Uh, and yeah, it's a lovely controller. We had three of these to give away. We've actually just drawn and announced the winners. And I will tell you who those winners are right at the end of this show. But for now, I want to go over to you guys and girls. I want to talk with you about why is local clubbing dying? Really looking forward to this one. Now, unfortunately, it looks like I've been kicked out of my platform, which means uh, this has been happening a lot recently. It's quite annoying because it means everything you've said all the way through this show up until this very second will not be available to me. Uh, however, I'm sure you've got a lot to say about it right now. So keep asking uh, your questions as of this second and everything you say as of now will come through to me. So very, very sorry if you typed something ahead of time. Uh, you're going to have to type it again. If it's any consolation, I wrote up a whole lesson plan yesterday on my iPad, sat in our camper van uh, down where the sun was rising, having a great little, you know, digital nomad time. It didn't save. I got back here and had to do it all again. So hey, it happens and it's just happened to us on our platform. However, look, your comments, your comments are coming through thick and fast here now. Uh, so everything you say from now on, I will will be sharing. And again, sorry if uh, I haven't got your comment from earlier because as of uh, 16.20 here, 20 past the hour, wherever you are, anything before then has been wiped off. Right, cool. I'll stop apologising and get on with reading out what you're saying. Uh, so um, uh, the ruckus says, oh, thank you, everyone. I humbly accept the prize. Hold off there, the ruckus. You will find out if you won in a little while. Um, so Santa Claus, with an E on the end, I like it, on YouTube, says, I still love the music after 30 years, but no access to favours. Chris says, records are too short. The best nightclubs believe that you should be of the clock. It was sealed so tight you had no idea what time it was. Yeah, I kind of know what you mean. You lost yourself in the best nightclubs. The KLF once said, nightclubs are great, but you leave your mind at the door. I always loved that saying. Uh, but yes, that's that vibe, that, that, kind of, that kind of thing has definitely changed. Um, JKM Claren on Twitch says, on the flip side of all of this kind of stuff, 
You see sessions like Fat Tony Brunch smashing it 12 till 6, uh, 12 till 6, i.e. 12 um, noon till 6 p.m. Adults raving in the daytime. Yes, I know what you mean. So I know people back in my home city of Manchester who run uh, events where they start at like 8 p.m. and go till 11 p.m. So the, basically the parents can get the kids with a babysitter and go out. And there's a lot of divorcees going and kind of having a second go at it and meeting meeting wife number two in these venues. True, this is all true stuff. Um, so Jake says, now the vibe is like a lounging scene. Uh, the crowd now don't love to dance. They love to drink and nod their heads to the beat. Well, I mean, this isn't a bad thing or a good thing, but it's good that you're, uh, good that you're kind of sharing this with us. I want to pull the laptop a little bit closer to me here to save me bending over it quite so much. Ian says, hey, Phil, well said about putting your nights on. I've done a few and I've really enjoyed them. Uh, there's definitely more to come from me. Hey, that's really cool. Uh, Blake uh, says on YouTube, says, I remember the days of Hullabaloo and the huge happy hardcore scene that Toronto used to have. If you want to shout out your favourite local independent club, just type your name into the box and I will give you a quick readout as we go through some of these comments. Um, you don't like my music, says, not to sound too much like a grumpy old man, but I wish the kids these days could experience the early days of rave, rather than sitting in and watching YouTube videos of your parents having fun. Hey kids. Um, Dan says, I don't think it's dying everywhere. Local club nights are everywhere here in Hastings, both with headliners and resident locals. I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, you know, I was chatting before this to the team here at Digital DJ Tips uh, and uh, one of our team, Ben in Macclesfield, which is a suburb, well, it's not a suburb of Manchester at all, but it's quite near to where I'm from, Manchester. Uh, it's a, a town in Cheshire, market town in Cheshire in England, said it, it really does appear to, appear to be dying on its feet there. So maybe different experiences in different parts of, of the country, of the world. Share, let me know. Uh, so T DJ Timothy Callahan, this is something, uh, thank you for this Timothy over there on Twitch. This is something that Steve Canuetto is championing, championing here at Digital DJ Tips as well. Uh, he spotted uh, Ultranate's podcast series, History of the World's Greatest Nightclubs, and it addresses why so many legendary nightclubs closed. So thanks for that, and I do recommend that. If Steve recommends it, I recommend it, because he's got a great taste. So, um, so uh, Sean says it's one thing trying to learn a technique the reputable and famous DJs use and another to take that technique and put the technique and put your spin on it so it's not a copy agreed and that's the kind of thing you learn at a residency. Uh, uh, Ghost Infinitum DJGI on Facebook says I'm just at the point that if I can get a crowd in the door and get them singing then it's a win. Dancing and just vibing is a hit or miss, but a win is a win. I totally agree there. Andrew on Facebook, all my local clubs have closed. Lots are due to increased policing for drunk driving, uh, bad management, and indeed most of my gigs are now seasonal for, event seasonal for events. That's what we were talking about as well. Uh, Don says, it seems as if a lot of folks at a club are missing interaction. Any suggestions on how to bring a bit of that back? Uh, interesting stuff. The new generation is more interested in video games than girls, <laughs> says Gabriel. Obviously, you're talking about the new new generation of of, uh, of uh, kids. Uh, my kid, my 12 year old, is certainly more interested in video games than girls, but he's 12. Uh, but that said, I think video games, the music, maybe video games are more interested in the music. But there's a lot of music being broken through. Video games, Roblox is one of the biggest music discovery platforms out there now, apparently. So, hey, who knows? Uh, spot on, says Mark on YouTube. With everything you said, Phil, all reasons have been drip fed over the last 20 years. <laughs> Chris says, lighting systems are no longer run by humans. I'm getting the feeling that you are a lighting jockey or you've or worked with good lighting jockeys in the past. Uh, John says the development of old industrial sites too. So many of the old clubs were on the edge of city centres that are now housing. Sankey's in Manchester, or Sankey's Soap, as we used to know it back in the day, as an example. Yeah, this is a great example of what I was talking about earlier, that people are moving into the city centres. Um, so, um, so clubbing is dying, in my opinion, because everyone within the clubbing age is addicted to the same thing. S cell phones, agreed, and processed food. I remember there was a club called The Ritz in Manchester, which is one of those old school dance halls, right? Remember, think of the old school dance halls with sprung, literally wooden dance floors with springs underneath. So people doing all the kind of, you know, waltzing and stuff could spring on the dance floor. And it had a gallery around it. And they used to have a burger stand in the corner, which used to serve food when 
couples went out and formally danced and the gallery was for everyone to watch. But they had to keep the food bit open because without the food bit open, they couldn't keep the license and keep the, the venue open till two o'clock. No one was ever in there in the food section eating their burgers. Funny that. Simon says, I beg to differ about the local clubbing scene fading. There's a healthy party scene in the south and southeast of England with multiple choices every weekend. It seems like a north-south divide going on here in the UK. I mean, look, I agree with you. I don't believe it is dying. Uh, I, this was, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It was, it was designed to, uh, designed to, what's the word I'm looking for? Pr uh, provoke. It was designed to provoke and get people to say, no, you're wrong, Phil. I do believe what's happening a lot, though, is that there's, and this always happens, a change of the guard. The old venues close, the old ways die, and guess what? A DIY culture comes up. This is the overriding thing I wanted to talk about here, isn't it? This idea of doing it yourself. So thank you for that. Uh, the rise of VIP and bottle service might be a reason, uh, says the ruckus. Thank you for that. Uh, I wrote a song about cell phones and I've been getting good results, says Benny. Uh, I performed it about three weeks ago and had a response from the audience. There used to be a song, you know that noise that your phone makes when it's too near a microphone? There used to be a, um, a house track which sampled that and had the words, somebody answer the phone. Uh, anyone remember that one? Uh, so, so yeah, right, look, people, you've been brilliant today. It's a lot of really interesting stuff you've raised. And thank you very much for joining in here. Um, I'm, the overriding thing, I think, is there's always room at the top for the best. So don't be put off by this. And do it yourself. That is the thing. That's how I started. There was no one filling the club that we promoted for five years. We bombed along the bottom for five years with 20, 30, 50, maybe 100 people in our club. And all of a sudden, the stars aligned, queues around the block. Five minutes later, we'd all bought our houses. Good times. Uh, but look, you've got to be in it to win it, right? So don't be disillusioned, but yeah, times are definitely changing. And we've talked about all kinds of reasons today. Phones, music being everywhere, switching to big events, cost of living, venues closing, people not going into nightclubs to meet the opposite sex or the same sex anymore. You know, there's all these kinds of reasons, but I do believe that underneath it all, people are always going to want to go up, go into a dark room and jump around to loud music. It's my opinion. Uh, so, right, on that note, I'm going to announce the winners of our competition. So just to remind you, the competition was to win this DJ controller, the Hercules DJ Control Impulse T7, motorized DJ controller. Hercules have teamed up with us with this prize draw, not a competition, a prize draw. You just had to enter. And we can now announce the winners. Three of these to give away. The winners are... I should have a drum roll, shouldn't I? I should have a drum roll on one of the buttons here. Uh, the winners are Norena Alley in Australia. Well done, Norena. Jesper Meyer in Norway. So well done to you, Jesper. And Jordan Ruth in the USA, or Jordan Roth. Sorry, I scribbled that down so badly. I'm not sure of your surname. No matter though, because all three of you have been contacted by the team and your prizes will be winging their way to you. Right, we're done here today, people. Thank you very much for taking part. It's been great to talk about DJ culture and getting out there and, uh, and performing rather than gear or music, which are our normal topics here. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do continue to comment underneath. My team and I will get back to you. We love talking to you. Uh, and I'm back on Thursday with our usual uh, Any Questions session, same time, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern. Until then, from me here in the Digital DJ Tips studio and from Sasha, God bless him. Get good, get out there, make the moments. We'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.